Hi everyone. Hi everyone. This presentation is about uploading your recruitment presentation. So I just want to talk about a few simple and free ways to get your presentations uploaded to the cloud. And of course, online presentations and video can be powerful tools to help you recruit students to your program and let them know about job opportunities in your field or whatever it is you want to get out to students. Video is a great way or any kind of online presentation. And this is a small group, so if you have questions, just go ahead and, and either interrupt, <laughs> that's fine, or type them in the chat window and I'll get to them um, when I can. And of course, just a reminder because some of you are on the phone and some of you are using your computer. If you are on the phone um, after I, I provided the instructions, please make sure you mute your speaker because otherwise we may get a reverberation when uh, you are listening to this. If you are on the computer and you wanted to use your microphone to ask Susan a question, you would click on the talk button and then when you are done you would click on that button again to release the microphone or you can use the chat window. Thanks guys. So this is our mandatory disclaimer that this webinar is funded by the Department of Labor T tax grant. Um, of course, my name is Susan Merkovich. I'm an assistant professor of chemistry for Kenai Peninsula College, the University of Alaska Anchorage. Um, just a couple of things about me. I won a Blackboard Exemplary Course Award in 2012 for my online survey of chemistry. I teach four different chemistry classes, lectures entirely online. And I've been doing that since for about eight years. And before that, I was an instructional designer for the University of Alaska Anchorage nursing program. And my BS is in chemistry. My master's is in learning and technology. And now I'm working uh, part time for Wichi on the Nanslo Media Projects. And that is going to be fun for me. And why should we use video? The, um, the latest, this is just an excerpt of the latest um, infographic from Educause. And their 2014 study, I just kind of pulled out this devices part. And look at the mobile device ownership. We are 2015 is projected to be 90% smartphones. So students, we know they watch video on their smartphones, but just 90%, that's just mind blowing to me. And look at the little image on the right. 54% of students typically connect to the network with at least two devices at a time. And this is a very large study, over 75,000 students. 213 campuses, 45 states, and 15 countries. So um, if you want to see the whole study, it's actually an IT study, just Google it up and you'll be able to find it. The Educause Center for Analysis and Research um, has provided this infographic. So I'm going to just go over a couple of PowerPoint tips. And one of the purposes was that I needed to make a little PowerPoint so I could show you how to upload it because we're going to follow me as I upload um, a PowerPoint to the web. And my first message is that, of course, you're making a PowerPoint to communicate, perhaps to recruit students, to get others to adopt your point of view. So at the end of this presentation, I'm actually going to give you a link to an excellent video produced by another college's allied health program that's um, very effective, has a lot of impact, and it's only seven minutes long. So I'll save that for the end and I will give you that link to watch. But it's an excellent example of communicating. And you can ignore the black <laughs> text at the bottom. This is a Flickr image and it's um, Creative Commons license, but you do need to, when you use an image from Flickr, a Creative Commons license image, you do need to give the author the title and the link. And the link just turned out to be this really long, long <laughs> Link. Another point, of course, don't clutter up your screen. Um, clutter is your enemy. So even if you don't think your slide looks cluttered, it might look to someone who's seeing your information all at once. Don't use too many bullets or images. Use consistent fonts and colors. So the perfect example is this is my husband's um, <laughs> garage, and I am always saying, when are you going to clean that up? He goes, what? I know where everything is. But when he saw this picture, he's like, what is that? Right? And even he thought it looked horrible. 
So it's uh, a good example for all of us that we might know what's going on on our slides and what we're trying to explain, but really um, a person who's seeing the whole thing at once might be overwhelmed. And then of course there's the famous um, do not read your slides. So here's an example of bullets. We see this all the time. Uh, faculty like to do this. They put a bunch of bullets on their slide and they read them. Now, if you are trying to give somebody information, of course, you're going to have text on your slide. But when you're recording yourself talking about them, narrating them, and uploading video, you are not going to want to upload something where you are reading your slides. People might get bored and go get a snack like these moose out my office window. And originally, I was going to share the PowerPoint instead of put it on here. <laughs> and I had a whole bunch of animations going everywhere. So take it easy with the animations. It's kind of fun to use them. But um, be judicious in your use of animations because people can you know, get sick from watching all those <laughs> animations. Motion sickness. Um, I created a little handout for you. We're going to look at, I'm going to demonstrate actually uploading on SlideShare, Jing, and Vimeo, they are all free places to upload your um, uh, videos or even just a PowerPoint presentation. And there, we're going from simple to complex, SlideShare, then Jing, then Vimeo. So I've prepared a handout. Sue's going to provide that to you. And um, it has the links for each one, the description, and what the limits are because it's kind of a lot to learn in one hour and, and retain. Then I have a couple of extras on here, how to turn your PowerPoint 2010 presentation into a video. There's a link. Um, don't forget that you can make a video on your computer with, with Windows Live Movie Maker if you have a Windows machine. There's a link to free audio recording and editing software Audacity, which many faculty use this program People who make video. Don't forget that you can take video, usually, with Phone, depending on what phone you you have, and you can set yourself to load that right up to Vimeo. So let's go ahead and go on and upload my PowerPoint. That's what we're going to do. So first we're going to SlideShare, then we're going to Jing, and then we're going to Vimeo. Um, I'm going to switch now from this whiteboard situation to sharing uh, my Chrome browser for a look at SlideShare. So you can see it's www.slideshare.net. Um, I created a login just for this presentation. And so when you go to SlideShare, you'll have to create a login. It's free. Um, it does have certain limits to your free account, as always. You can, uh, it's really difficult to add audio and share a video, but your regular PowerPoint or infographic is free to upload, and you can share that link privately or publicly. So let's go ahead. It's as simple as, always look for the upload button when you go to one of these places. <laughs> So it's simple as clicking the upload button. And see right here, you can see that you have the option for public or private. You can drag or drop your PowerPoint file. I'm just going to go upload and look for my um, PowerPoint. And it's this one called PowerPoint Tips that we just did with the moose and the bear and everything. Um, this is pretty, it uploads pretty quickly because it's a small file. You haven't added any audio at this point, right? So I'm just adding a presentation that has no audio. You could do the same thing with an infographic, a brochure, whatever you need to upload here, and then just send out the link. Then, so basically, what's happening here is that um, Susan has taken a PowerPoint presentation, but with SlideShare, it just pushes it all together for you. So it's, you know, if you're using PowerPoint and you want to publish out, you have to try to figure the publish command and an executable file and send it out to people so they can view your slideshow. But with using SlideShare, it does that for you. I just wanted to point that out. 
Okay, so I went ahead and checked the private button. You could see the little image to our left. It has a little lock on it because I said it was private. I'm going to save and continue. You could also see what it looks like. See the C-Mobile preview? That would be important if your students are going to um, look at it on their phone. So we will call this an education. And we'll say PowerPoint because Okay, and then we can just view our presentation that we just uploaded on the web. And, and again, an important thing that Susan mentioned is it formats it so it is uh, viewable appropriately on a telephone. Again, whereas if I just distributed out my PowerPoint presentation, um, somebody couldn't view it on their phone. I'd have to do some things to format it that way. Does anybody have any questions about SlideShare? So of course, if you're no. trying to get, go ahead. I was just going to say, so who's going to see this other than myself? Uh, I mean, do a lot of people automatically go to SlideShare, or, or is yeah, this just a way of saying, now I've got it, no matter where I go, without having to carry around a jump drive? No, this will show up when you Google things. Okay, so if you put in more than I did in the description, because remember I just made it private, right? Because right. this this presentation does not lend itself to being, uh, you know, without audio because I don't have any words on it really, just a few words. So and my my speaking was kind of important to this one, but if you had one like a brochure, or an infographic, or a PowerPoint that had, you know, five important points. Um, why you would want to join our program, right? Hire me. Maybe that's the title of it. Um, and then whatever your program is, when people Google, if you made it public, it will be, you know, in the list. Maybe it'll be number one hundred thousand, but <laughs> it might go up. But it will be so in the list. SlideShare is a kind of social media for slideshows. It's I've never heard of SlideShare before. I'm sorry. I no, don't. I, I mean, that's why we're doing this. Learn about three ways, three places to put your stuff online. So it's not really a okay. social media; it's just a, a a place to put your presentation in the cloud, so that you can give people the link to it, right? Okay. Or it's okay. searchable. So if you put in the description the name of your college and the name of your program, it's possible that someone looking for that, you know, googling would would hit that. Right? right. So okay. that's what it is. It's a place in the cloud. And this is the same thing as um, Jing, which we're going to do next, and Vimeo. They're all places in the cloud that people can um, watch your, whatever you have put up there or see your infographic. Like that infographic from Educause that I did a little screenshot of, I right. found that by Googling. Okay. And so it took me. I looked. I wanted to mention too that if you you can follow people. So as an example, I get um, emails from SlideShare because there are certain people I followed on stuff that they've posted up. And so it says it sends me an email because it's tracking what I've done, and sends me an email and says, "Hey, you've been following so and so. They just posted a new SlideShare." So actually, there are ways that they reach out to you based on the topics that you are viewing on SlideShare, just as information. Okay. That's great. That's great. I'm not a SlideShare follower, so I'm not even, um, you know, savvy. But what I do like is that you have statistics. That's going to tell you how many hits you get. And then look, it made a transcript out of the text. I'm scrolling down. Hopefully, that's not. Driving you crazy off of the text on the PowerPoint. So, um, really simple, easy way to get your information out there. Any other questions on SlideShare? Um, I was going to do Jing next, but I, I think I'll pop over to Vimeo because for Jing, I'm going to have to share my entire de desktop. So it would be more seamless for me just to click over here on the Vimeo that I have ready. <laughs> so 
Vimeo, you will see a lot of Vimeo um, video when people give you links to their video. And Vimeo takes um, obviously audio and images. So you are going to want to upload a video file here. And like I said on the, when we went over the handout previously, the different ways you can make video, you can turn your PowerPoint presentation into a video because of course you can record narrations on your PowerPoint. And then there's a way to turn it into a video file that you could upload on Vimeo. You can take video on your phone and upload it right to Vimeo. They also have um, Creative Commons license to music if you want to add that somehow in your video. And they have the mobile app, like I said, that you can download to upload video from your phone. So the free account for Vimeo is one upload per week, which is, I mean, that would be plenty for me, 0.5 gigs for non-commercial, which is you guys, 10 per day. And um, a couple of disadvantages, you may end up with banners you know, on your video. You've seen that when you watch video. There's a little banner. It's not as, um, it's not as bad as YouTube where there's just a lot going on all the time, a lot of ads, but there may be a little banner. And also, I discovered, you may have to wait in line uh, for your upload. So you saw how quickly ScreenCast uploaded our non-audio <laughs> presentation. But Vimeo um, can take, like my little presentation, a little chemistry one that I uploaded took like 45 minutes. So basically, I was waiting in line for my video to upload. So if you need something in a hurry, um, yeah, it's not going to happen instantaneously. So of course, so you're going to click. So videos as well. What's the advantage to this over just using YouTube? I just like the interface better, and also um, one of the reasons I don't use YouTube is because I. You guys don't have this issue about the copyrighted materials, but I um, go over copyrighted materials for students. Well, on YouTube, yes, I can make that private, but if students share it, it can get out there <laughs> whether or not I made it private. That is not a concern for you. Um, okay. YouTube, it's a, if you already have a YouTube channel, like you're way ahead of this simple presentation. I picked the simplest things possible, but there's no disadvantage to using YouTube. It's a little more, I think, complicated to set up because for me, I have to have a channel, an educational channel, and I have copyrighted material. So, and I don't really like, like when I send my students to a YouTube unless I embed it, there's all kinds of other stuff all over the screen. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. I don't know, maybe that, if that's not an issue, there's really no reason I would encourage you to use YouTube because um, it's so ubiquitous, right? And your word is really going to get out there if you use YouTube. But this is just a simpler, cleaner interface that offers only a couple of options. Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's just this it's is complicated, very right? Yes, and the, and also then the watching of it is less um, complicated. But that's just my preference. I mean, if if I really wanted to get the word out, I might start, you know, with these simple things and then say, I'm going to figure out YouTube today and I'm going to get my videos up there, right? But Vimeo um, is the same, has the same um, options as SlideShare where you will hit these Vimeo videos googling and looking and probably Sue, do you have the same subscribe, I'll log in. Um, feature where you could subscribe to some of these videos, kind of like you do in uh, YouTube. So, yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure of Vimeo. Um, well, there is. Here's a feed. Like yeah. I could click okay. feed. But the first thing I wanted to tell you is always look for the upload a video button. And this is the one where it took 45 minutes to upload <laughs> my video. I'll go ahead and click on it, but I'm not going to upload one. And here's the rules, you know, you don't upload copyrighted video. And then you just click this choose a video to upload. And then there's here's the mobile apps. Watch, shoot, edit, and upload from your phone. And I just watched this morning a wonderful video from Rice University's um, free textbook program. And it was clearly made from different faculty talking about how much money they saved using the free textbooks. Some of them were kind of blurry. It was 
um, a really actually powerful video. And that's another thing I want to mention. It does not have to be perfect, right? It was real people um, sending in real video saying how this um, free textbook program impacted them and their students. And, their, and, and it was just awesome. So don't think that your video has to be perfect. Susan, I have a quick question for you on the mm -hmm. video. Um, mm -hmm. I, on the mobile app, it says watch, edit, and upload. So I am assuming that the, a comparison between YouTube and Vimeo could be with YouTube, you just upload something you've created. With Vimeo, you can actually do some editing, put some titles in, and that type of thing in relationship to your video. Am I mistaken on that? Um, I, don't, I don't know if YouTube app has editing abilities, but one thing that YouTube has is closed captioning abilities. <laughs> and, uh, it doesn't and have they, capabilities, though. I yeah, can't have, edit a video. I know it has right. closed caption, but I can't edit something. It's, it looks like this tool actually allows you to do some editing. I don't know how sophisticated it is, but... I'm looking on the mobile app. <laughs> Put Vimeo in your pocket or backpack. And so you can see that has for both Android and iPhone. So, um, and you can play it on all of these uh, devices, the TV, or that would be what students, you know, or whoever your audience is would want to play them on. So I'm just going to go back. So I encourage you. And then, of course, there's the GoPro. But what I wanted to show you was I uploaded a, a really quick video. And see my storage? I've hardly used anything. So if I click on videos, I was just going to show you what I uploaded. I just uploaded a chemistry problem, right? Because that was what I had handy. The, I didn't upload the PowerPoint here that we just went over because I didn't record audio with it, right? And I wanted to um, upload something that had audio to test this uh, Vimeo system and to show you. Now, you can't hear the audio, and I'm just going to fast forward it so you can see this is a screencast that I actually made with um, Camtasia. But what I want to tell you is when, when I went to upload it in Vimeo, it said, your audio is unsatisfactory and your video is low quality. Right? And I went, well, this is what I have. So um, it was fine. And the audio actually is fine, even though we're not listening to it. So don't be scared. I guess what I'm saying is don't be scared to try and put your stuff up there and see what happens. Because you can take it down. So like right now, I can, I can go uh, here and I can delete it. Let's see, how did I do that? I just tried it before I, um, before I did this. But you can, and it's not hard, I just can't talk and click at the same time. You can delete your video. Oh, I'm sure I'll find it as soon as we uh, stop. But these are all the settings that you can do on your video. And here it is. Delete this video. Okay, so, so don't worry about trying things. And you can change the privacy after. So if you want to put something up and see how it looks, make it private. Then go back into the settings and make it public if you're happy. And if you don't like it, just delete it. Now, I don't have advanced information to give you on this video. I'm just kind of showing you, you know, here's an easy place to upload video. It can be as simple as this. But yet, you can click on these other, other um, <laughs> links and explore advanced, op advanced options if you really get into it. You can make collections. Does anybody have any questions on Vimeo that are simple? <laughs> I really like Vimeo. Um, what I'm going to do now is show you something. So you might be saying, <clears throat> what if I don't know how to make a recording? And what if I just want to um, do something quick and easy, a little screen share? Like I showed you the writing. You know, you probably aren't going to want to do something like that. But you could um, run a little PowerPoint and maybe you don't want, you're only going to talk for three minutes and maybe you don't want to go through this convert your PowerPoint to a video thing. I have something uh, 
really nice for you. And I'm going to actually share my desktop. So be prepared for something of a. Uh, so now you can see my desktop. And I'm going to click on this text message. So to the very right of my screen, I just mouthed over this half of a little yellow sun. And it has three little um, balls on the end, right? And so my mouse is over there. Hopefully you can see that. I'm simultaneously on the TechSmith web page, which offers Jing for a free download. And you could see the picture of the little sun, which ends up being on the side of your computer once you install Jing. What Jing does is it takes screenshots. And also, most people don't know, it takes video. See down here where it says record what you do on the screen. And it does a really um, nice job of recording what you're saying. And then you just click a button and it uploads it. So you have a certain amount of free space on screencast.com, which is the TechSmith uh, Jing repository there. And it is so fast and easy that I mean, I use it all the time. If somebody has a question or a faculty has a question, how do you do this or that, I open it on the screen, click my Jing, and I'm going to do this in a second, answer them, and send them the link. And then they can watch me do it. So let's try it. And Sue pointed out a complication yesterday. We all have a yellow um, outline <laughs> around what I'm sharing on my desktop. But also, we're going to get a yellow outline when we decide what we're going to record on Jing. So let's see here. I think that I will record myself talking about this PowerPoint. Okay, so don't be confused that I have um, accessed this PowerPoint on SlideShare. But on SlideShare, I don't have any audio. So I'm going to go ahead and capture. Now hopefully you can see I am going I have an orange crosshair and I'm going to drag it. Okay, now I have a little kind of orange bright area over my assistant professor of chemistry slide. Can you can somebody let me know if this is all if you can see this, Sue? Yes, I can. Okay, great. So here's your little Jing control. This is it. It's the simplest thing in the world. I'm mousing over the first one. It says capture image. This one looks like some video film, capture video. If I just wanted to take a screenshot and slap it in my PowerPoint like I did with that infographic, I would just click there. But we're going to use the video feature. So when I say capture video, it's going to say my mic is on, which it's really not because I turned it off <laughs> to, to do this webinar. And I'm going to talk. And you see the little um, video things are going. And I'm going to go to the next slide. And I'm going to talk about Nanslo. And I'm going to talk about why we would even use video. And I'm going to talk about Communicate. And you can see that I can go for five minutes. Five minutes is plenty of time to do anything you want. So I am done recording, and I'm going to click this Finish button. Now, I can watch it and see if it looks good by pressing this Play button. And if I like it, I could save it. But the easiest thing to do is see these little three up arrows? I'm going to click the up arrows. And now, it is uploading it to TechSmith. You have a little bit uh, website. You have a little bit of a limit of how many of these things you can have. And I'll show you my history in a second. But it doesn't take very long. It's that easy. And you're going to end up with a link to your video. Does anybody have any questions while it's uploading? <laughs> this is my favorite thing. Um, Susan, I just wanted to make a comment. So as an example, let's say you're recruiting a student and you have an application form online, and they're a little bit confused on how to fill in that application, you could actually go to the website and step through accessing the application and show them how to input information. So you could do it as an explanation. You could capture the video, and you could send that link back to them, or you could post it somewhere so other students as well 
um, understand how they go on your website, find the application, and post it up. That's correct. So you saw a little um, a little square came up when Sue was talking, like view it on screencast. And I think it's because I have a lot of things going on. It usually stays up quite a bit longer. <laughs> but but I, I missed it. I missed viewing it on, on screencast. What am I going to do? So this first button was the capture button. If you see me way on the right, it's probably real teeny on your screen, unfortunately. This second one is the history button. This third one is the settings button. So I'm going to click on the history and see if I can find it. And here it is. It's the very last thing I did. right? And I'm going to click on that. And look at I can put it in the trash because maybe I've made a whole bunch of these and I'm hitting my um, uh, limit. So we can watch it. We can check the settings. It's already on screencast. Oops, I uploaded again. Sorry, just goofing around. But you can see how um, oops. I have too many things going on. How much I use Jing. This is all I have not hit my limit and I'm scrolling down. This is all the, the stuff I have on there. So even though this is my um, I have a lot of molecules, <laughs> screenshots. Even though this is the last one I'm talking about, this is the one that I think is the easiest. So these are my videos, these are my images. And Susan, will you show them how they would find the link for that so they could post it out to someone? Yeah, I'm trying to, since I missed the link, usually what I do is I click on that, um, uh, it looks like it says it didn't upload. I wonder if it's because we're in Collaborate and we're double, triple doing stuff. Let me just do it again. It didn't take that long. Okay, see this view on screencast.com? That's what we needed to click on. So as soon as I clicked on it, it said view on screencast. Okay, do you see this? Um, I'm going to close my history because we're getting messy. See the link right here? I just highlighted up in the URL. That's it. Screencast.com, nonsensical numbers and letters. Okay, so this would get that. And if you lost it, you could go back to that history and get it again just like we did by clicking on it. Free, absolutely free. So you're cool. saying right now, if I went to that screencast dot com backslash nonsensical numbers, it would bring up this video that you just created. There it is in your in the chat window. Go ahead and try it. But I might need to stop sharing my. I'll stop sharing my desktop to simplify everybody's life there. What's well, coming up? Looks like. Of course. Yep, there it is. So the situation I think it was Sue described earlier, where you're showing a student how to fill out a form, perfect use of this tool. Perfect. And if you have any questions on this, you could just um, Sue will put my email out there, and you'll have your little handout with the link to it and everything that I showed in the PowerPoint. But this Jing is the easiest thing ever. And you, you know, five minutes doesn't sound like a lot, but it really is a lot. I, I don't think, unless I'm doing a lecture, any kind of explanation for faculty or anyone else has taken a whole minute. But other people are so pleased or faculty when instead of saying typing, okay, go to the forum, you need to do this, or go to the website click here, that you just record yourself doing it, and they just are like, oh, that was great. So if I was doing like an orientation thing and I wanted to show somebody how to do something, I could embed this as well into, sure. I don't know, an, an activity that we were doing somewhere? Okay. It's just a link. You could send it out via email. You could put it on your website, you know. Right. Yeah, if you had a recruitment PowerPoint as an example, you could actually, you know, run through it on the screen, do um, audio to it, and again send it out as a link for people. Right. 
And in that little settings button, um, you can uh, configure your audio, make sure you're using your microphone or your headset mic if that's what you want. So any more questions? Pretty neat, huh? Yeah, I really like this one uh, the best, the Jing. Yeah, so do I. The others are um, kind of in between. So the slide share is just like, I don't have any audio. I just have a brochure or a PowerPoint that I want to put up there. And then Vimeo is like, I have a 15-minute video that I made with all of these interviews I did with my phone <laughs> of people about how much they love our program. And you know, so obviously it's not a screencast. It's something that you've taken that's real video of people. You would want to put that up on Vimeo. So here you kind of have the, the um, you know, the array of different um, possibilities, right? And then I would put YouTube as the fourth and more co most complicated of them. But again, the, probably the biggest audience. Right. But of course, did any of these can be shared anywhere and targeting your, your audience with your website. So if you had a video, though, you would go to Vimeo. You would not go to Jing for that. Jing no, is huh? taking a PowerPoint or still shots and creating them into a video, correct? Right. And so see the, I see the URL it. under my name, screencast.com. So the claim to fame for this simple little thing, it just kind of does this one thing, and it does it really well. And the beauty of uploading it for free with no FTP program, you know, you just click it and boom, it's magically there. And so these are all kind of like that. Um, but Jing, there's just, you know, it's just so simple. And then Vimeo would be not a screencast, right? You wouldn't be able to use, use Jing for that. I, I think oh, and I see Maria Fife is on here. A simulation, Lavona. So you can actually, the person can actually see your cursor and all that stuff as you're doing things. So it's kind of simulating an activity so they understand how to do it themselves. I mean, that's often, it's kind of like a, a mini version of Captivate or Camtasia. Very simple to use. So I see Maria Fief is on here. Maria, if and I guess you can answer down in the in the answer thing on the bottom. But so if we created something like this, then we would need to put this on our OERs, right? You could just put the link in there, right? So right, and so you put the link in there, and then it's there. And what you want okay. to do, Lavona? is um, you would also want to put that disclaimer on like we did at the beginning of this webinar as part of that. Um, the DOL disclaimer, yes. The DOL disclaimer should be a component of it. And you should also indicate that it's CCBY attribution. So um, Maria says that the DOL prefers the entire piece. Now, um, I know what you're saying, but the, 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 the simplicity of Jing is due to the fact that you don't have to learn how to do any kind of compression or settings or anything. Jing actually is the same um, company as Camtasia. So if you were going to do something longer than five minutes, you'd have to learn how to use Camtasia, which is not you know, that difficult, but there is a learning curve. And then you would have the actual individual files. So when you use Camtasia, you have to have somewhere to put those files to play them, right? So um, that's the trade-off um, with having the actual files. Jing is the quick and dirty get a link. <laughs> and Camtasia is you have to learn how to use this somewhat complicated program, and then you're stuck with a bunch of files that you need to upload somewhere. So, okay, good. Good. So that, that's how you would get that other option. You'd use the, the um, non-free paid version of Jing, which is, which is Camtasia, which offers lots of editing um, capabilities. But um, Jing is, is so easy. You know, if you, if you watch it and you don't like it, you hit the X, you do it again until you're happy, then you upload it. And so for, for something under five minutes and, and something quick um, to send out, it's 
just can't be beat. Thank you very much. This was helpful. Oh, good. I'm glad to hear it. I was worried at first. <laughs> Um, I, I just kind of, if there aren't any more questions, I wanted to um, close with an example of a student recruitment video. And it's going to open up in your browser. It's only seven minutes long. And I'll also put it in the, um, in the chat window. It's one that Pat found, actually. You're welcome. And if you have any questions, feel free to contact me. But it's a, it's a, it will give you some good ideas about how to recruit students, inform them about jobs in your field, and I encourage you to watch the entire video to be inspired by it, be creative, and get your message out there. So let me go get my link. And like I said, it's only seven minutes. And while you're doing that, Susan, I also want to mention I am going to put a link to the feedback form for this webinar in the chat window, and I would ask, please, if you have a sense, go out to this link. And I would like you to go ahead and um, go to SurveyMonkey and uh, give us your feedback on this session today. Thank you. If you think of any questions, feel free to email me or you need any help with these programs. And I believe Sue recorded it if you forget how to do something. And thank you, Maria. <laughs> and, um, and Sue will be getting out the handout, like I said, with the three links and the advantages, the reminders of what each one would be best for. Okay? It was lovely to meet you all. probably need to turn your speakers back on. Remember we turned our computer speakers back off if you're not hearing your video. <laughs> are, are you going to display this though within the window so they can see it? Yeah, you know, because I'm doing this web tour, it's not letting me put the link in. I mean, I put the link in and when I hit enter, oh, there it goes. Yeah, it's it Orange Coast College. Come up web tour, so you should be able to go right to the video for everyone. Sure. If you can't watch it now, grab that and save it. It's really very good. But I'm still seeing Orange Coast College, and I'm not seeing the video piece. Right, and I'm not hearing anything either. Oh, that's very annoying. So you might not be hearing things. If we tried this yesterday, Sue, and it worked good. Right. So, um, I'm still seeing the website. I'm not seeing the. Yeah, I see that. So everybody can just go to the link. Plan B when Collaborate's not working. The link is in the chat window, and but so. I Suggestion first, though, release your desk desktop completely, and then go to that web tour. Okay, that's what I did. Okay, I'm on the whiteboard, All right. but I think it's just as easy to go in the chat window. And then I went to the web tour. Okay, and then I could see something different now. No, nope, and then I scrolled down and I started the video. So scroll down your screen. There always has to be something. Everything else went pretty smoothly here at the end. That's exactly what you needed to do. Okay, so everybody would scroll down your screen where you see what she's looking at, and then click on the play button. And turn your speakers back on if you turn them off like I did, your computer speakers. And I'm going to put my phone on mute. Susan, I'm going to come back on because I have a feeling they may not be hearing the the actual audio on this. Um, could people uh, indicate in the chat window whether or not they can hear the audio?
Um, Susan, yeah, they can't hear it. So would you stop it for a second? Um, just clear back the um, whiteboard, please. Why don't we just click on it individually from the chat window link? I'm going to try one other thing. Let me try this real quick myself. Oh, good job. So again, I don't know if we're going to hit the audio, but I'm going to try. Yeah, it. I have the audio. Do you have the audio with it, your speaker on? Yeah, I turned my speakers on. <laughs> okay, so. Uh, please indicate in the chat window whether or not all of you can hear this. I can hear it. Okay.
questions was actually pretty simple. There wasn't a long wait list for medical to the So I just applied during the summer. I took a class that introduced me to this program. And then the next fall, I showed up to class and I was in the class. A lot of classes are heavily textbook focused and textbook based. So you have a lot of head knowledge, but you don't really understand how to do it independently. So here, uh, not only do we go over the vocabulary, but we Some good ideas in there. <laughs> Susan, um, just to regroup on that video and based on the information like in Vimeo and things like that, these are platforms that you could utilize to create a, a recruitment video such as this or a, a, another video that talks about job placement, etc. And it would be a matter of scripting and defining what uh, things you want to shoot. You could even use your cell phone to shoot students. Is that correct? Yeah, that's what I would probably do. I mean, I just, uh, as I said when I started out um, talking about Vimeo, I just saw one uh, from Rice University that was very um, uh, unpolished, right? And so uh, clearly, faculty had submitted their own little uh, pieces of video saying because they were all different. Some were blurry, some were in focus, but it didn't really. The fact that it wasn't polished didn't really diminish um, the message. And it's the same thing when you do lectures. You know, when you're recording them. You see some ums, or you laugh a little, or you have to back up. I never delete those things because when you're really talking to somebody, it's not like that, right? It's not perfect and polished, and it doesn't really impact the message. I don't think this is clearly a very professionally produced and polished video, but I don't think that's necess absolutely necessary. Easy enough to go around, have a few questions prepared, talk to some students and faculty, and um, you know, put that together into a simple, short, introductory video maybe to accompany your other recruitment materials. Or you can even embed it in a PowerPoint. You know. So okay. lots now, of options. So I have to leave, and she did post a quick question. So I'm assuming she's asking, if I do something in Vimeo, can I then take that file and post it up on YouTube? Oh, the Jing? Um, not the Jing, because you really don't have that. File. It put it up there, but it's nowhere on your computer, right? But if you did a Vimeo, you could you would have that. You know, you'd have that video file. You could put it on Vimeo. You could put it on YouTube. You could put it wherever you want. You could put it in the repository if you have the video file. Jing is the only one that just puts it up there, and you do not have it. That's the only one. The five minute limit, right? Because you're not going to make. Uh, Probably you probably wouldn't put something that short. Well, I guess you could put it up on YouTube, but um, it's just kind of two different um, places to put something, and you don't have 
The thing about Jing, the simplicity of Jing is because you are not dealing with that video file yourself. Right? So then the, the downside is, oh, you don't have the video file. <laughs> it's up there. Right? But all of the rest of the methods, you would need your original file to put on Vimeo and to put on SlideShare and to put on YouTube. So how you create that file, whether with your cell phone or narrating your PowerPoint and converting it to a movie, the instructions on the handout, that is, um, you know, that's the challenge, that you have a file that you will have to deal with, either putting on video, Vimeo or putting on SlideShare or putting on YouTube. But the, the, the simplicity of Jing is that you are not dealing with that file. And then you have the file. <laughs> um, I think Maria mentioned that um, you can take a Jing file and convert it to an MP4. I think the big, I mean, if I understand correctly, the big thing is that Jing is more of a screenshot a simulation. It's not really a video. It's you know, you're maybe doing a PowerPoint and you're recording your voice, whereas Vimeo is actually a video format. So it's where you've you've taken video and and using it. So, but you can apparently download a Jing file as an MP4, which is a video file. Yeah, yeah. I think it makes a Swift actually. Okay, and then a Swift is a, a Java file. Ash file. Yeah. Right. File. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I tell you what, we have run out of time here. So really, some great participation, comments in the chat window, and as I said, really appreciate all the time that all of you took today to participate in this webinar. And as mentioned, I did post earlier the um, link for the feedback form. I please go out and provide us with your feedback. It's always important for us to know what you think. And Susan had also posted the link for this video if you want to return to it and get some pointers on how you might be able to make a recruitment video as well. So with that, I want to thank Susan for her time today. Great presentation. And thanks to all for participating. And with that, we're going to stop the recording and close out the session. Thanks so much, everyone. Bye.